Hello and welcome back to Open Table Adventures. As always, I am Dan the Baker, and I am back here today with another episode of Recipes for Adventures, our series where I make a little recipe based on some amazing TTRPG content from across the internet. Today, the recipe I have for you is inspired by none other than Dimension 20 Fantasy High. Now, usually, I don't like to do the big productions. I like to try to do this for more of the indie, smaller productions, but Dimension 20 just raised over $100,000 for the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund, and I feel like we need to celebrate that. Hey, so they've actually raised way over $100,000 for the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund, which is an organization dedicated to providing meals, medical supplies, care, and comfort to children across Palestine and the Middle East. There are more details about PCRF and how you can help in the description below. But what recipe am I going to be making for this titan of the TTRPG community? There are so many possibilities I could do. I'm making apple strudel. Based on Adine Abernant's short-lived part-time job at Oodles of Strudels in Fantasy High junior year. Now to get started, let's make our puff pastry. If you want to do this the easy way, you can just get your own like frozen puff pastry, let it thaw out and use it later on. You can skip to this timestamp somewhere and that's where I'll continue the recipe after I make the puff pastry, but I'm extra and I hate myself. So I'm making my own puff pastry. I guess the easiest way would be to just wait for one to pop out of the strudel dimension, but barring that, let's get started. To get started with our puff pastry, I'm going to take our dry ingredients, which is the flour, sugar, and salt, and just give them a quick mix. Next, I'm going to take my butter, which I have cut into like small half inch cubes uh, and froze, and I'm going to mix it in with my hands like a third at a time. The goal is to incorporate the butter into the flour while also flattening the butter out into little butter like discs because that is how we will get our like flaky layers in the puff pastry. You really don't want to work the butter too much because you don't want it to crumble too much and you also don't want it to melt too much. If it does start getting a bit too melty for your taste, you can take the whole bowl and just pop it in the freezer for a couple minutes until the butter solidifies again. Or you can take that like wand that Adine got at the end of season one that I think then got turned into a guitar pick by Gorthalax. I don't remember. That was a long time ago. Now those uh, keen-eyed viewers out there will probably notice that I am making a rough puff pastry, not a full puff pastry, because while I do hate myself, I don't hate myself that much, and a full puff pastry would put me into a rage. Now that my butter is pretty much incorporated, I don't want to overwork it too much because then we're just making a pie dough. That's not what we're making today. Just tune into that video probably next week. I'm going to take my ice, ice, ice cold water and slowly incorporate it into the mixture, uh, mixing with my hand as we go. You probably notice that the kind of the theme for this video, uh, much like uh, some of the bad kids' relationships with their parents, is cold. And I'm just going to mix with my hands just a little bit until the dough starts to form a ball. Not the ball, but like a shaggy doughy ball. You'll see. Now I'm gonna let this sit for just a couple minutes to let the flour hydrate. Now that the dough is hydrated, I'm going to turn it out onto a lightly floured surface. With the help of my bench scraper, I'm going to fold it onto itself, not necessarily kneading, uh, but just kind of combining it a little bit more. I don't want to overwork it too much because the butter will just start to melt more. This is gluten-free dough, so I'm not really worried about overworking the gluten, but I really am worried about that butter because I want that butter to stay buttery. If you're like me and you just have naturally really, really hot hands and you're afraid of this butter melting, no lie, grab a couple of like ice cubes and just hold them in your hands for, you know, like honestly, as long as you can take it uh, before working with the dough and it really helps out. In culinary school, I would sometimes just go and stand in the walk-in freezer uh, for a couple minutes before working with pastry dough like this because I, I'm just too hot to handle. I don't know what to say. And if your dough starts to get a bit too sticky, don't be afraid to add a little bit more flour. Now we have our block of dough. 
Uh, you can kind of see the like marbling of the butter. That's exactly what we want. I'm now going to wrap this in plastic wrap and stick it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. And while we're letting that chill, we can work on our filling. You're making apple strudel. <laughs> now the classic strudel filling, or at least in my opinion, I'm not a strudel expert, don't quote me, is apple. So we're gonna make an apple cinnamon filling for our strudel. And also like apple, apple bees, Kristen apple bees, that's, oh fuck, I could have done something with figs. It's too late now, we're doing apples. So I have here three kind of medium sized Granny Smith apples that I'm going to peel and cut into small little bits. You can use whatever apple you want, except for fucking Red Delicious. Fuck Red Delicious. You know what you did. So I have all of our apple pieces in our bowl. Next, I'm going to add our sugar and our cinnamon. Give that a good old mix. And to top it off, I'm gonna add a little bit of flour just so everything kind of holds together a bit more and isn't too liquidy when we add it to our strudel. Now I'm gonna put this to the side until we are ready to fill. Now that my dough is chilled, uh, it is time to do the bane of my existence, which is laminating. So on a floured surface, Flour the dough a little bit too. I'm going to take my rolling pin and roll our dough out into a long rectangle. It doesn't have like, have to have an exact measurement as long as it's long and rectangular. Ugh, I told you this is the bane of my existence. I don't do it a lot. As you're going, you should see like streaks of butter of that marbled butter. Uh, throughout that is a good sign that means that we are gonna have nice little pockets of butter that are gonna melt create steam and create flaky layers you don't need to know the science of it I know the science of it I have a science degree dough has been rolled out to about half an inch thick uh, now I'm going to do what Fabian Seacaster does anytime he sees a cute girl and fold I'm gonna use my bench scraper to help out a little bit and just take the right third of the dough, fold it over the middle third, and then take the left third, fold it over the other part. So this just like fold it just like you would a letter. If you've sent a letter, this is the 21st century, people usually just email. I'm going to take this and repeat that process one more time. I'm gonna now wrap this block up, put it in the fridge for about five minutes, repeat this one more time, put it back in the fridge for about 30 minutes, and then I'll see you then. So now that our dough is all chilled and ready to go, it's time to assemble. So once more on a floured surface, we are going to roll out our dough, this time with a little bit more direction, because I want this specifically to be uh, eight inches long, uh, and then I'm gonna cut it into five inch wide pieces. I'm not a geometrist, I'm a baker. Okay, so our dough rectangle is about 20 inches long, eight inches wide. I'm now going to cut it into four five inch pieces. I'm going to put the rest of these back into the fridge while I work on one. I'm just gonna roll it out a little bit more just so that it's a little bit thinner. Just... I'm gonna show you two different methods for assembling our strudels today. One's a bit easier, one's a bit more complicated, but a bit prettier. For the easy one, we are going to take our apple filling and put it on one edge, leaving about an inch gap on the long side, about a half inch gap on the top and bottom. Then with a little water, I'm going to run my 
fingers down the short edge here. Take the long side of the pastry and fold it over the apples and then lightly close it. I don't want to pinch down too hard because then I'll pinch down all the layers that we worked so hard to get. And then once more with some water on the short edges, push down to seal. Then I'm going to take my knife and cut along the top just so we have some air holes and the steam doesn't make the whole thing explode. Cause that's bad. And now for our fancy one, I'm gonna take our apples and put it right in the middle. Once again, leaving uh, about an inch on the top and bottom, and then about two inches on either side. Now what I'm gonna do with my knife is I'm going to cut away the corners here, just so where, <laughs> just where the apple starts on the pastry so that I can fold this top bit over. This just makes everything so much easier. My knife, I'm going to cut this uh, length of pastry along the sides into little strips. And now we are going to start by taking the little pastry at the top and the bottom, just folding them over to seal in the ends. And I'm going to take the strips and kind of make a little braid, alternating left and right, coming in at an angle, so that we will come out with a little braided strusel, strudel mummy. I'm gonna take my water and just seal it down the middle, just so this doesn't unfurl while we're baking. And there you go. I'm gonna do this for the other two slices of my pastry. If you don't wanna use all four, you can totally just wrap that pastry up real tight and it can be saved in the freezer for up to a month. Now that we're all assembled, I'm gonna take a little bit of egg wash and just wash all of our strudel. I'm gonna take a little bit of sugar and sprinkle it over our strudel. Now I'm gonna put them in my oven, which I created to 350 degrees for about 20 minutes or until they're nice and golden brown. Now, this would be the perfect time for me to sit here and tell you guys all about all the different reasons why I love Dimension 20 and why I've loved them so much over the past couple years. But I think I know a few other people who might have something to say. What does Dimension 20 mean to me? Why do I love Dimension 20? I think there's so much to love about Dimension 20. It's kind of hard to say what I love most about Dimension 20. I like Dimension 20 because of like, it's very much bite sized like um, uh, campaigns and stuff. It's expanded what I thought the TTRPG space was and shown me there are more options and more ways to run games, more ways to tell story. One of my favorite things about Dimension 20 is the worlds. They all feel so vibrant and lived in, and it's nice to see all the little things going on in the background. I started playing D&D pretty close to when I started watching Dimension 20, um, and I really think that it made me both a better DM as well as a better player. It really helped me bring, you know, a fresh new element to the tables that I played at. It's made such an impact on me and its ability to bring these beautiful fantasy worlds to life and yet manage to have such relatable and compelling storylines. And it's fostered a wonderful community where I've had the chance to make friends that are very dear to me. I also love Dimension 20 because they bring together so many incredibly talented people into the same space and just let them create earnestly and genuinely create stories. Like the stories that are told are so compelling and make me excited to come back every week and watch the next episode. I love how much these players, um, the cast loves their characters. Like they truly care for these characters as much as we as an audience do. The thing that I really love about Dimension 20, which I feel like makes them unique, is the ever-present love of telling a story and especially the love of the people who are contributing to the story. I mean, when the players love a thing so much and when the storytellers love a thing so much, it's impossible as the audience to not love it to at least even a fraction of that extent. My favorite thing about the content of it that I've watched so far is that it's entirely based on fun. 
it's this perfect example that it's very cool it's a game that's about having fun with your friends or with whoever you're playing with and they focus on that entirely it allowed me to get inspired to draw again and because of that i also met so many new friends through the community it's something that has brought me and a lot of my friends together it allowed me to build a community of nerds who love the same thing as me. I have never felt more represented in like a community than I have with the Milton Point. Of course, the representation I've learned about myself through that. It's so nice to be able to see so many queer, so many people of color, so many trans people in the class itself and also in the characters. The thing that I marvel at um, after almost every episode is watching the players make choices that are in character that negatively impact them because it would be what their character would choose or might make for a, a better story or a funny bit. It's college humor's finest. Um, they're all in one place, they're playing a silly game, they're all, they're all being silly, and I appreciate it. Watching how they interact, the goofs, the gaffs, the, you know, the laughs they share around the table, uh, the, the bits. Um. I love the thought that's put into the characters. I love the clear, like, lovey, it's, you know, it's people doing bits, it's, it's comedians being funny, it's friends hanging out, but at the same time, there's a lot of love for the characters. He's beautiful, lovable, flawed characters who fight monsters and go on quests, but they also deal with everyday problems that anyone could face, some that I've experienced. One of my favorite quotes from sophomore year is Cathilda saying, uh, no, but no one is defined by their worst day. And that was very meaningful to me. It kind of healed a part of my soul um, that had been kind of hurt. Good couple of years. A crown of candy, where like um, the where the king was black and the two kids were black, black coated, despite being played by two white people, and the king being played by an actual black person. I think that Dimension Twenty handled that pretty well. Like it's one of the examples I go to when I'm like, hey, I don't actually like this in general, but this did this pretty good. Dimension Twenty is also really great because it pushes actual play as a medium in terms of production, in terms of quality of storytelling, in terms of the types of stories being told. Uh, they're never satisfied with being stagnant, they are constantly pushing, and I love it! Well, aside from being a medium-defining actual play that has pushed the possibilities of production for the last six years, they also show that you can make art in a way that aligns with your values. That's why I love Dimension 20. Uh, Dimension 20 is one of my favorite shows. Thank you, Dimension 20. Thank you, Dimension 20, for changing my life. He says thank you, too. Look, we say thank you. And, you know, I get to be a mortal enemy of a Bria Iyengar. It's, it's, it's not a bad life. Couldn't have said it better myself. And there we have it, folks. Our apple strudel inspired by Dimension 20 fan... What was that? You want a sauce with this? For our sauce today, I'm going to be making a vanilla custard by heating up some heavy cream and vanilla on a medium heat till just before a boil. Then I'm going to whisk some egg yolks and sugar until a pale yellow. I'm then going to stream in that hot cream while whisking and then add it all back to the stove on a medium low heat. Staying on that low heat, I'm going to stir constantly until thickened and it covers the back of a spoon. I'm then going to add it to this little jar here. And just like a bunch of shrimp at a bad kid's party, it is ready to serve. Delicious. Now, there we have it. Our apple strudel inspired by Dimension 20 Fantasy High Junior Year with vanilla sauce. Roll the glamour shots. I just want to say a big thank you to Dimension 20 for being such an amazing part of the TTRPG community. I also want to thank everyone who submitted all of those wonderful videos telling us why they love Dimension 20. Thank you, Elena, for organizing all those videos for me. And finally, thank you, Madeline, for giving me the inspiration to make this video. And also, thanks 
all of you for watching this. Why don't you take some time and tell me in the comments what you love about Dimension 20. And stick around here for more recipes, for one shots and actual plays, for interviews, and so, so, so much more. As always, I have been Dan the Baker, this has been Open Table Adventures, and you are always welcome to pull up a seat. Bye-bye.